Welcome back to Hard Row Box. Today, we're finally going to explore KB Lake G, one of the most interesting pieces of hardware to come from Intel in a while. This is the first ever chip that combines an Intel CPU and an AMD GPU onto the one piece of silicon, forming what is essentially the fastest APU style processor on the market. It's not quite the same as an APU or SOC, and I'll discuss that in just a moment, but it does bring together a powerful CPU and highly capable GPU onto a single compact chip. By now, you might have seen a bit of coverage of Intel's KB Lake G NUC, otherwise known as Hades Canyon. That was the first KB Lake G product to hit the market, but as a NUC, it's a bit of a niche product and most reviewers got access to just the very top end model with the fastest KB Lake G SKU inside. Considering KB Lake G is mostly designed for mobile devices like laptops where the top end SKU is unlikely to be used, to review this chip we really wanted to get our hands on the processor inside an actual laptop as a more common SKU, and that is what we'll be talking about in this video. The processor we have on hand to review is the Core i7-8705G, which is one of the 65 watt KB Lake G variants as opposed to the full 100 watt units seen in the NUC. There are already two laptops that use the 65 watt model and moving forward if any more laptops are going to use KB Lake G it's far more likely they'll be choosing a 65 watt model like the 8705G rather than the 100 watt 8809G used in the NUC. So the benchmarks we'll get to in a little bit should provide a good idea of how KB Lake G will perform for most users. I've tested the 8705G inside the Dell XPS 50 2-in-1, which is a 15-inch slim and light laptop that also packs 16 gigabytes of dual channel DDR4-2400. Since the best use cases for KB Lake G are these sorts of slim and light laptops, again, we'll be getting a good idea of how the chip performs in a typical usage scenario. So let's explore KB Lake G, the lineup and its specs before we head into the performance numbers. The chip itself does contain both an Intel CPU and AMD GPU on the one package, but it's not a combination of both into the one die. Instead, there are actually two dies on the package. One is a quad core Intel CPU with integrated HD graphics, and the other is a Radeon RX Vega M GPU with up to 24 compute units, sitting alongside 4 gigabytes of HBM2 memory. The two dies are connected through eight lanes of PCIe 3.0, and the GPU is connected to its HBM2 through what Intel calls the Embedded Multi-Die Interconnect, or EMIB. You can see in this picture exactly how the dies are laid out on the chip. The Intel CPU sits away to the right, while the AMD GPU and HBM2 sit on the left. The HBM2 chip is separate to the GPU, as you can just make out, and it's between those chips that Intel's EMIB comes into play. There are five KB Lake G SKUs in total, split neatly into variants with the 100 watt TDP and those with a 65 watt TDP. The 100 watt SKUs use Vega MGH graphics, which is a fully unlocked version of the GPU with 24 compute units, a base clock of 1063 megahertz that boosts to 1190 megahertz. The 65 watt variants use Vega MGL graphics, which cuts the GPU down to 20 compute units and lowers clock speeds to 931 megahertz base and 1011 megahertz boost. And that's really the main difference between the 100 watt and 65 watt chips. The extra power headroom gives you more CUs and higher clocks for better GPU performance. The CPU is pretty much the same across all five SKUs. We're looking at four cores and eight threads with minor variations to clock speeds between the models. The Core i7-8705G we're looking at today is clocked at a 3.1 GHz base with a maximum turbo clock of 4.1 GHz on a single core. That drops to 3.9, 3.8 and 3.7 gigahertz in two, three, and four core workloads respectively. The exact same CPU is used in the 8709G, but that chip features the top end 24 CU Vega variant. The top end 8809G bumps the CPU clock speeds up slightly from there. And at the bottom end, we have the Core i5-8305G, which features lower CPU clock speeds and less L3 cache, but the same 20 CU Vega GPU as the 8705G we're looking at today. And the Core i7-8706G is the odd one out. It's the exact same as the 8705G from a spec perspective, except it has Intel's enterprise features like vPro, and trusted execution technology enabled. The 8809G is the only overclockable chip in case you are wondering. 
As for HBM2 configurations, all KBLAG chips come with 4GB on a 1024-bit bus, but the 100W SKUs have that memory clocked at 800MHz compared to 700MHz on the 65W models. All KBLAG G SKUs also come with Intel HD graphics integrated into the CPU die. It's the standard HD 630 GPU clocked up to 1100MHz. The idea here is that when you're on battery, the laptop can switch off the more power-hungry AMD GPU entirely and just run on the integrated graphics, and when the discrete AMD GPU is required, it can be powered up for far superior graphics performance. The final thing I want to discuss before getting into performance is the power split between the CPU and GPU. The 8705G has a 65 watt TDP in total, however the PL1 power limit for the CPU, in other words the sustained power draw limit for the CPU, is capped to 47 watts in the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1. That makes perfect sense too as Intel's quad-core KB Lake H series CPUs had a 45 watt TDP and KB Lake G ups the clocks by around 300 megahertz across the board. This gives the GPU at the very least in sustained workloads a full 18 watts to work with. In actual practice when the GPU and CPU are fully utilized, the GPU will run above 18 watts and the CPU below 47 watts depending on the requirements. Like with any SOC, algorithms determine how much power is allocated to each part of the chip depending on the workload, but you can see just from the PL1 limit that there is always some headroom left for the GPU even under full CPU load. So how does KB Lake G perform? We'll start with the CPU performance then move into the GPU later. With the CPU the most important comparisons are between the Core i7-8705G and Intel's previous and current generation H series CPUs, in particular the i7-7700HQ and the i7-8750H. Both are 45 watt CPUs similar to the power available to the 8705G CPU. The 7700HQ has the same 4 cores while the newer 8750H bumps it up to 6 cores. Looking at Cinebench R15, we can see that in the multi-threaded test, the 8705G holds a decent 8% performance advantage over the 7700HQ, using its higher clocked cores to its advantage. In the single-threaded test, it pushes this margin out to 13%, again, thanks to better boost clocks. However, it's in the multi-threaded test that the 6-core 8750H dominates as expected. With two extra cores, the Coffee Lake CPU is 46% faster. It's a similar story in the Handbrake X265 encoding test. The 8705G is a mere 2% faster than the 7700HQ, but gets punished to the tune of 27% against the 8750H. Having those extra cores in Intel's newer H-series CPUs really helps in these intensive encoding tests, where KB Lake G appears to be stuck with last-gen CPU technology. In Microsoft Excel, the 8705G is 3% faster than the 7700HQ, but falls 33% behind the 8750H. Again, this is down to the 8750H having more cores, which is a large advantage in most modern multi-threaded workloads. The 8705G does hold a handy performance advantage in 7-zip's compression and decompression benchmarks to the tune of 13 and 8% respectively compared to the 7700HQ. However, once again, the 8750H comes in and smashes the 8705G, achieving 38 and 57% more performance in these tests. There's a pretty clear trend here, and it's not one that favours KB Lake G over Coffee Lake H. In mixed workloads, we start to get a good look at how the CPU and GPU combination stacks up. When Excel Accelerating a Premiere encode with Lumetri effects, the 8705G competes strongly with gaming laptops that pack faster GPUs. The combination of a 7700HQ and GTX 1060 is not seen in slim and light notebooks like the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1, yet KB Lake G is only 20% slower here. Photoshop's accelerated iris blur effect is another that, even with a much more powerful 6-core CPU and GTX 1070 Max-Q GPU, it's only 28% faster. Across most CPU limited workloads though, there is a pretty clear trend. The 8705G is marginally ahead of the Core i7-7700HQ thanks to its slightly increased clock speeds, but it lacks those extra cores of the 8750H. As such, the 8750H is often at least 40% faster in crucial workloads like video rendering. Let's take a close look at the Vega M GPU included with the Core i7-8705G because that's where a lot of the interest will lie. In particular, it'll be interesting to see how the Vega M GPU with 20 compute units stacks up against other popular discrete GPU options like the GTX 1050. I want to start with 3 Mark's entire suite of tests here because I think it paints a really interesting picture of how KB Lake G stacks up against the GTX 1050 combined with the 7700HQ. Unfortunately, I don't have data for an 8750H and GTX 
GTX 1050 combo just yet, but hopefully I'll be able to follow up on that soon. In any case, with the more CPU demanding tests like Cloudgate and Skydiver, KB Lake G is clearly behind the 7700HQ with the discrete GTX 1050. In the overall score for Cloudgate, the 8705G is nearly 10% behind the GTX 1050. However, as you move into more GPU intensive tests, the 8705G pulls well ahead, and in the top tier Time Spy test, the Vega equipped processor is now 16% ahead in the overall score and 17% faster in the graphics score. This paints a good picture for KB Lake G's gaming prospects as games are mostly going to be GPU bound on a GPU in the class of a 20CU Vega. For GPU computer heavy workloads as well, you can expect KB Lake G to outperform a GTX 1050 and fall just below a GTX 1050 Ti, though clearly well behind a GTX 1066GB. Similar results to 3D Mark are seen in our two GTA 5 game tests. When playing on near maximum settings to 1080p, which is quite GPU intensive, the 8705G pulls 26% ahead, although both systems are sub 30 FPS at this point. Using medium settings, however, the GTX 1050 gains an 8% performance advantage as the game loads up the CPU to a greater degree. Although you can clearly see with an 80 FPS average, the GTA 5 is playable on KB Lake G. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, the GTX 1050 combo does slightly outperform KB Lake G using DirectX 12 and high settings of 1080p to the tune of 6%. This is a game that this class of GPU tends to struggle with, and to get a good gaming experience, I'd recommend turning down the quality levels further. In Deus Ex Mankind Divided, the Core i7-8705G is a good 8% faster than our discrete GTX 1050 combo at 1080p using the high preset. It's also worth discussing where KB Lake G falls relative to GPUs more commonly found in gaming laptops. Using our newer game testing suite, you can see the 8705G provides almost exactly half the performance of the GTX 1066GB in Assassin's Creed Origins using the medium preset at 1080p. It's a similar story in games like Watch Dogs 2 and Prey, you're going to get around half the frame rate of a genuine GTX 1060 gaming laptop. If you're interested in a more detailed look at how KB Lake G performs for gaming in a laptop form factor, I'll be doing a follow-up that will go through a ton more games and show if they're playable or not, and at what quality levels, but in general, the 8705G in this sort of form factor provides a decent entry to mid-level gaming experience, with performance between that of a GTX 1050 and GTX 1050 Ti discrete GPU, though closer to a 1050 Ti in more GPU intensive games. So we've seen all the performance numbers and how KB Lake G stacks up to a range of hardware, and I've got to say I'm pretty impressed with what Intel has managed to achieve here. It's not going to blow your socks off with screaming fast levels of performance, but with the Core i7-8705G we're getting a CPU that's a bit faster than a Core i7-7700HQ and a GPU in the GTX 1050 to 1050 Ti range on a single chip. And all of that goodness fits into a TDP that makes the chip suitable for use in slim and light notebooks. It's basically the fastest single chip compute solution available with a great balance of CPU and GPU power. And that's all been made possible through combining Intel's solid high-end mobile CPU with a powerful GPU from AMD. A strange combination for sure and something I didn't think we'd ever see, but here we are, it exists and it's definitely definitely quite compelling. However, while the Core i7-8705G is an interesting technical achievement, its competitiveness up against other potential hardware combinations for ultra-thin laptops is a bit questionable, and I think a lot of that comes down to Intel almost shooting themselves in the foot through the inclusion of a quad-core CPU rather than going all out with a six-core Coffee Lake CPU. By not including the latest CPU technology in this fascinating APU-type product and then releasing it alongside new faster CPUs, Intel has basically allowed a CPU plus discrete GPU option to better compete with KB Lake G than it otherwise could have. Take the combination of a Core i7-8750H and discrete NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti, the very combination you'll get with the latest Dell XPS 15. With this combo, you'll get slightly more GPU power than the Core i7-8705G with Vega MGL, but crucially you get two extra cores and 40-50% to more CPU power, and that's one of Intel's own products directly competing against and providing a better option than KB Lake G.
Of course, competing on performance is only one part of the story. It also comes down to price and power consumption in a lot of cases. Unfortunately, right now it appears KB Lake G is more expensive to integrate than the 8750H plus GTX 1050 Ti for a lower level of performance. While not a direct apples to apples comparison, the XPS 15 2 in 1 with KB Lake G is $250 more expensive than an otherwise identically configured XPS 15 with the 8750H and 1050 Ti inside. Even when factoring in a rough $100 price premium for the 2 in 1 design, the exact margin used for Dell's 13 inch variants, KB Lake G is adding to the total system cost, or at best costing as much as the 8750H plus 1050Ti combo option. There may be some power savings to be had with KB Lake G, but right now it seems that a thin and light notebook cooler in a 15 inch system like the Dell XPS 15 line is quite capable of dealing with the power consumption of either this processor or the 8750H paired with the 1050Ti. While I tend to think the 8750H plus GTX 1050Ti will offer more performance and a better experience for laptop owners, I don't think KB Lake G or the Core i7 8705G is completely useless. The single chip design of KB KB Lake G provides a clear space advantage over two separate chips and additional VRAM modules. If properly harnessed, this advantage can lead to more space for other components like batteries and storage drives, or it could bring this level of performance to smaller devices. Either of those things would be a huge win and would allow KB Lake G to occupy market segments the 8750H plus 1050Ti could not service. In product shipping right now though, like the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1, I don't think that advantage is being fully utilized. There's also a lot of promise to this single chip large GPU design, and I think a second generation to this product line could be highly competitive. Simply upgrading the CPU to a six core design or whatever Intel is using in their top end H series chips at the time, along with refining the GPU to squeeze a bit more out of the power envelope will do wonders for this processor. It's not unusual to see teething issues with a first gen product like this, especially when it's competing against a refined product offering, but I'm pretty excited to see what will happen in the future. Anyway, those are my thoughts on KB Lake G and the 65 watt variant shipping in laptops today. Stay tuned for a deeper dive into gaming performance in the coming days, so don't forget to subscribe to catch that in your inboxes. Consider supporting us on Patreon to get access to our exclusive Discord chat where you can ask us questions anytime you like, and I'll catch you in the next one.